Hey guys, it's Agustin Trimmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with Unity and Machine Learning. Today I'm going to be showing you what you see playing behind the scenes, which is a demo that I created to basically show you how to work with Machine Learning. In this demo, we're going to be creating a project from scratch. We're going to be creating an agent. We're also going to be creating and adding observations. Also looking at what a heuristic is, what does it mean, how, do you, how can you use it, also how you can actually apply actions that are sent from the TensorFlow and Python API into Unity, and then how we can actually apply those actions in Unity by using forces. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so I'm really excited about today's video. I just created a project, it's called Unity ML Essentials, doesn't have anything in it, but the other thing that I went in and, and added, just so that I don't take too much time, is I added ML agents. So I'm using the version 1.0.2. So other than that, I haven't done anything to this project. So I'm going to start by just renaming this scene. It's going to be basically or basic pathfinding. And it's going to be pathfinding with, you know, ML agents. So I call it pathfinding because that's what it looks like when I, when I build it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new empty game object. This one is going to be our area. And this is pretty standard to how I watch some of the videos from Unity. They do this this way. So I'm going to create a plane as well. It's going to be the floor. And I'm also going to create a couple more objects. So we're going to have a cube. And this one is going to be 0.5. And then I'm also going to create another object, which is going to be, in our case, it's going to be the player. So I'm just going to call it player. And the cube is actually going to be called target. And another thing that I'm going to do so that this looks better, we're going to go ahead and just click on auto generate so that we can auto generate the, the actual lighting. And then another asset that I like to use, let me see if I can find it here really quick, is one that I use for prototypes. So let me click on here and then look at all my assets. And this asset, it's basically a bunch of textures. So I'm just gonna go ahead and import them, click on import. And I like to keep things looking good because I think it excites me to work on things like that. When they don't look good, it just, for some reason it just doesn't. So. Okay, so we have our target, we have our player here. I also need, it, need to give it 0.5 on the y-axis. I'm gonna put the player here and then we're gonna put in this guy over here. We can, you know, it doesn't really matter where we put him. We can just keep him, let's keep him in, in zero and then we can keep the player maybe perhaps right here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is we're going to, let me go ahead and go into the grids and then we can just make this look good to start. Let's go ahead and expand the materials. There's a lot of different materials in here that I like to use. We can just use maybe like a light blue on that. And then let's make the player yellow so that it comes out. And then perhaps we can make the target, we can make it green. There we go, something like that so that it looks, it looks better when we do things like that. So the other thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make a platform. So I wanna, I wanna make it, I don't wanna make it too easy for the player. So to be able to reach that. So the goal is we gotta go and find this guy. So what I'm gonna do, and that's why I basically call it the pathfinding because it just reminds me of a pathfinding. We go ahead and add this here and then I just center this, something like that. I think that works, doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clone this. And then we're gonna be basically just doing the same thing. We're just gonna put him right here. And something like that, I think that works. I don't wanna leave a gap because then we're gonna have a little bump. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the, the target is gonna be right on the right behind it. We can probably do negative 20, I think that's about right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna randomize the position of this guy. So this guy can be here, 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 or in the middle. And then we can also look at doing something more difficult. So like we can have some platforms that are Skinner, I want to keep it simple like that, and then at the end we can probably experiment with the area. So this one is going to be floor, we can just call it floor skinny, or we can call it platform, it's just really up to you. And then this is going to be, we just call this one floor, and we can just call this one platform, I think it makes more sense. So we have our main floor here, we have our platform, and then so let's put them maybe next to each other, and then the player, and then the target, right? So something like that works. Okay, so, so far so good, we just haven't coded anything, right? We just have a platform. We are gonna need to add a couple of things to the player. 
because the player is going to have to move. So we're going to be moving him with forces. So I'm just going to add a rigid body to him. And then these ones should already have mesh colliders, which they do. And if I were to hit play, everything should just, you know, nothing should fall. Oh, and the other thing that I'm going to do as well is let's go ahead and just align our camera. Because I want to be able to, when I run this simulation, I want to be able to look at how it looks. And I think perhaps this, because we're going to be cloning that. And I think that, I think that works. Okay, perfect. So the other thing that I'm going to do is this one. I also want to give it a rigid body because I want it, the ball to collide with it. I don't know that it's going to make a difference, but I do like to do that. Then on the target, we're going to be labeling things. I like to label, so, well, not label. I'm going to be adding tags. So in this case, I'm going to make this one the target. And let me remove that and re-add it. It's going to be target. There we go. And then this is going to be, this one right here is going to be the player. We might not use this in this video, but I'm going to, I need it for perhaps the next video. But we're going to need it anyways. And I don't know why it didn't add it. Let me try. Oh, there we go. So we got the player. We got the target. And then this is going to be the floors, right? So we're going to be doing one tag as well for the floor. And I did that again. I wish there was a way to edit them. But there isn't. So I'm just going to do floor. There we go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just add that tag to every single one of the objects. Okay, so, so far so good. So now we need to go ahead and concentrate in our player, right? Like right now, the player doesn't really know about, you know, that we're using ML agents. We just really don't know anything about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a new script. Let's go ahead and go into assets. I like to keep this organized. So I'm just going to say scripts. And let's go ahead and add this guy. We're going to get, be adding a new script here. This is going to be the player. This is going to be the player agent. I like to call him player because it is a player in this case. So we're just going to do at that script. We have our script. And right now it doesn't have any properties. And I'm going to show you why. So we're going to double click it. And then we're going to be concentrating in C sharp just for the next few minutes. So a couple of things that we're going to need. We don't need these methods here. And I'm going to be inheriting from agent. So what we're going to need to add is are going to be a couple of namespaces. So we need the using statement on Unity and then ML agents. I'm also going to need to duplicate that. And we're also going to need sensors. So we're going to be looking at basically the life cycle of an agent. So we're going to be looking at a couple of different methods that we're going to need to overwrite. So I'm going to do public, overwrite. In this case, I'm going to overwrite the initialize because we're going to need to set a couple of variables for the agent. I also need to do one on the collector observations because we need to tell basically the Python environment, the TensorFlow environment, what are we collecting about. In our case, we're going to be collecting the agent's position. So if I go back into Unity, we need to collect the agent position, also the position of the target, and also the velocity of this guy. So this guy is only going to be moving on the z-axis. So it's going to move this way. And also on the on the x-axis. So just know, so, so you know that because we're going to be doing that in here. But before we do that, I want to override a couple more methods because we're going to need to do more things. So the other things that, that I also need to do is the actions. I'm going to be overriding the actions method because we don't want to move this manually. We might for development, but not when we have the agents running on their own. So that's why we need to basically handle the actions, which is a vector of floats. It's an array. And this is all zero index. So we're going to do, you know, index zero is going to be our first value. And then index one is going to be our next value. So I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing there in just a minute. And then we're going to be doing an override on another method, which is going to be the heuristic. This is going to allow us, so when we're talking about ML agents, there's two different, there's actually three different types. But the ones that I'm going to be covered today is going to be heuristic and then the default. The default means that we're going to be using TensorFlow to process the data. It's going to be sent back to us and then we're going to tell the agents to do something. But when we're overriding this method, that means that we're going to keep control of what's happening with the input. So we're going to tell the brain, you know what, brain, this is what it's happening. And you get those inputs and we're going to be sending those inputs to, you know, TensorFlow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, so this one we can implement it now. So I can show you how that works. So we're going to be doing input and then get key. 
For the first one, we're going to get the horizontal value. So I'm just going to do horizontal. And then I'm also going to be doing index one. And index one, it's going to be vertical. So the way that it's going to work, this is going to be for our x axis. And then this one is going to be for our, basically our z axis. Because we're only going to be moving in two directions. So, and why is this complaining? Oh, because this is actually not working. Why is it not working? This is, can I convert a type of bulb to flow? And this is actually a flow, so I'm not sure why it's complaining. Let me go ahead and go back and see what's happening here. Oh, I think I'm calling the, the wrong. So it should be get access and then also get access in here. We want the flow value, not the, so what's gonna happen here is we're gonna get the value of X and we're also gonna get the value of Z. So I'm gonna show you, so this is basically what we need to do to tell the agent. The agent needs to know how to move on the X axis and also on the Z axis. So if we look in here, it's gonna be moving in this direction. So that's gonna be the horizontal and then on the vertical axis, which is going to be, you know, moving forward. Okay, so, so far so good. So then what we need to do is we need to tell the agent, you know, what kind of a speed it's gonna have. And then also another information that we're gonna meet, need to track. So I'm gonna start with a couple of variables here. I'm going to need to capture the speed. And I'm gonna set this to be the value of 10 as default. We can also serialize it here to be able to modify it. The other things that I'm also gonna need is I need to get the agent rigid body because we need to be able to apply a force. So I'm gonna say, rigid body, and then this one, I'm not gonna serialize it, I'm just gonna get it through the initialize method. So I'm just gonna say rigid body equal get component, and then rigid body, there we go, perfect. Then all the things that we're also gonna need, and this is probably not a good name to give it because that is kind of what the game object is using, and not kind of, it actually is what the game object is using. So I'm gonna do player rigid, body that way it doesn't complain about it awesome so other things that we're also going to need is i'm going to need to store the original position so and also the target so i'm just going to do a serialized field here this is going to be a private and also game object target so it's going to be the goal right this is the person the well not the person the cube that we're going to need to access and then we're also gonna need to store the original position. So I'm just gonna do a vector three original position. The reason why I need to store this is because I want to know where the agent started so that I can randomize the, the X value. So if we go here, remember I'm gonna be randomizing this value. It's actually gonna be, in this case, gonna be Z because I'm gonna be moving that you know from here to here. And I think I can do, it's gonna be from negative four to four. So I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that. So the original position of the agent, it's going to be, we can just set it this way. I'm just gonna do original position and equal, and we're gonna do transform that actually no position. We're gonna be local position because we, I wanna make sure that we keep within the hierarchy within the area. So it's gonna be the local position under that object. And that should get us going for now. And then the other things that I'm also gonna need is I'm gonna tell the system, okay, what kind of observations I wanna have about the agent, right? And also about the target. So the way that we access, that we can tell the, the tensor flow in Python API, what the observations are, are by calling the sensor observation. And if you look in here, this, there's a bunch of different overrides. This takes a lot of different types. So in our case, we're gonna need to basically keep track of the local position of the agent and also the local position of the target. So I'm just gonna do transform and then local position. Perfect, and I'm also going to do the same thing with the target. So I'm just gonna do target in this case. And I also need to know the, the actual velocity of the, of the actual player because now it's going to tell TensorFlow, you know, what the velocity is at what point. And it's gonna help with the training. And I noticed that it did when I was including it. And actually Unity included it in their example as well. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. So we can do Let's go ahead and go here. We actually named this one player and I'm gonna do velocity. And remember, we're gonna be using the velocity of X and well, in this case, it's gonna be Z and then also the velocity of X. So I'm gonna do X, 
and we're also going to be doing Z. Perfect. And I think we're good here. We have the original position there. Then there's another one, another method that I haven't overwritten yet that I need to do. And that's going to be the on episode begin. This is going to be executed every time we, so as soon as we end an episode, the on episode begin is going to start when we're going to be doing a new training session. So I'm going to do that here because we're going to need to restore the position of the player. So this is going to happen once, but then we need to do that as well on the on episode begin. So I'll show you what we need to do there in just a minute. So before I keep going in here, what I'm going to do is we need to apply a force. And to do that, I'm just going to be using the player rigid body. And we're going to do our force. And the vector force here, it's going to be a combination of a couple of variables that we're going to be getting from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, let's do it this way. I'm just going to do var, and then it's going to be the vector force. And this is going to be a new vector force. And I'm just going to do vector 3. And it's going to be basically empty in this case. But I'm going to do vector force dot x. And we're going to be setting that value based on the, you know, based on the vector action. So I'm just going to do, this is going to be at index 0. And this is going to be on the z-axis, going to be the vector 1. And then what I'll do here, I'll just do the vector force and then multiply by the speed. Remember the speed that we say right above it? So right now, this is not going to do much. There's really, we're not telling the agent if they're doing good or not. I just want to test it with these different, you know, with these two inputs that we're setting here so that we can control the speed. So let's go ahead and go back. And actually, we're not controlling the speed. We're controlling the movement of the actual sphere. So as you guys can see in here, we have a player engine, but we don't really have anything other than we have a speed. So we also need to associate this target. So let's go ahead and go ahead and associate that. We're also going to need another variable here, another script, which is going to be the behavior parameters. And this one, I'm just going to give it a name. We can just give it player. And this is going to be player. And just say, call it maze. I think it's fine. It's going to be the name unique to this behavior. So if we were to clone the area completely, every behavior is going to be feeding the brain. So if you have this ID multiple times in multiple objects, the brain is going to be using that to train, basically to train that brain. So if you change this, that's going to become a different brain. So make sure that you keep those names consistent. The other parameters in here that are really good to know. So right now, this is, and this was confusing to me when I started using this. I'm like, vector observation, what is that? And the way that, that that works is, in this case, this is going to be three observations. Observations. And this one is going to be, and I'll show you why that is. This is going to be three. This is going to be one. One observation. And this is going to be another observation, right? The reason why this one is three is because this is x, y, and z. So we're tracking x, y, and z. And I can just clone that here. And the reason why this one is 1 is because we're only trying 1. So if we sum those together, this is 6, 7, and 8. So we need to set this value to an 8. If you change that value to a 7 and this is greater, it's going to complain. You're going to get an error. So in our case, we're going to need to do that. The other thing that I also need to do is I need to change this to continuous because we're going to have to basically change the force continuously on this. So I'm going to change this to 2 because we're going to be tracking the value of x and also the value of z. So it's going to be set to 2. And the other behavior type that I was talking to you about, I talk about using heuristic. And that's that's a behavior that we can control, right? This is the one that we're going to get from the input. So whenever you're doing your testing, I recommend that you start with that. And then you override this method. You get all your inputs that you can set in here. And then you can see, make sure that all of that is working before you move ahead and and try to you know, implement how the on action receive works. So what I'm going to do is actually I need another thing here as well. So we're going to need the, it's actually the decision requester. And it's always, this is kind of like the frequency of the decision. So I was reading about it and they recommend a value from three, from three to 10. So I'm going to leave it as default. I think this, this works fine. And I think that's everything that we need right now as far as like making it work. Let me, I'm just going to go ahead and move this up here. And we can probably just get the camera a little closer. 
so that we can see the area better. And then what I'm gonna do now, let me go ahead and go ahead and, and open up PowerShell. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my folder here where I have my environment. So I showed you that in the previous video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go virtual environments. And remember that I have my, my environment set up here for a different project. You can use, you know, you can create a new one or you can use, you know, the video that I showed you previously. I'm just gonna use this one. I think this is fine if we use this environment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, we can just say py, uh, Unity ML agent. And in this folder, let me go ahead and do that one more time. This one has a scripts directory. If you're using Mac, it's going to be just source. And then you can go into that bin and then activate. In our case, I'm using PowerShell in Windows. So I'm just gonna do it that way. So there we go. So we have our environment set up and I'm going to go ahead and go into that folder. So on the, on the ML project, which is the ML agents that we cloned from the previous video, make sure you watch that video. We have this folder called config and I'm just gonna use one of those. It doesn't really matter in this case that I use something different. So it's gonna go ahead and go into PPO. And then I'm just going to use the one that I, that I had for the 3D ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and clone it. So we're gonna do 3D ball and then we can just copy that file trying to remember the, the commands for, for Windows. But this one is going to call, we, just got, we can just call it player and then 3D player maze. I think that's what we call the behavior. So I'm just gonna call that. Okay, we should have one of those files already created in here, player maze. And if you wanted to look at that, we can look at that as well. We can just open it with code. And I haven't really looked much into these parameters yet. All I know is that you need to make sure that you tweak these parameters in order for you to get the best performance. I haven't really digged too much into it, so I'm not gonna really worry about it. And the parameters that I was, that I was reading about it were the hyperparameters. I'm, I'm gonna skip that section, but I promise that I will give you a video on that. So for now, just know that the file is set up. It, it's going to work. So let's go ahead and go back here. And now we should have something called ML agents and the dash learn. And what I can do is I'm gonna point it to my config file here. Let me go ahead and do, let's go ahead and that backslash and then config. And this one is going to be our player. We need to go into PPO and then player mace. And then this is gonna ask for a run ID. So I'm just gonna say, okay, this is gonna be the run ID. And you can just give it any type of run ID that it just needs to be unique. So I'm just gonna say mace. This is gonna be the starting point. So I want it to be, you know, I want it to start at one, so if we want to do a multiple, and then we should get the Unity logo here in just a minute. And then once we get the Unity logo, I'm going to start training. So, so far we don't really have much other than we have a method that is heuristic. We're basically getting an action and we're just sending a bunch of observations and we haven't really implemented the um, on episode begin just yet. Okay, so we're good to go here. I just want to make sure that things are working okay by using the you know, the default heuristic override. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play. And make sure that things are just connected and working. Okay, and let me see, let me go ahead and go here. You can see that the, the velocity is just, the speed is way too fast. But what I did is I just moved my mouse here and let me make sure, okay, it looks like it's connecting. I think it disconnected from the, yeah, I think it did. So let's go ahead and go back. I'm gonna hit play here. And there we go. And I think it's still oh, okay. It's gonna complain because I need to I need to override it. Or you can actually do a dash dash resume. It should resume it as well. Let me go ahead and go here, hit play one more time. And I think it's working. I think it's just not too heavy. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Let's go ahead and go into our mass and if we can increment this mass, maybe for a value, let's do a value of 10. Go here, I'm going to do, let's do resume this time. And wait for the unit logo. I'm going to hit play. And there we go, I think things are working. Let me go ahead and go back into the script here. And we have our vector X and Z, zero, okay. So it is working, it's just going way, way too fast. And I think it's because the speed is just too, too fast. So the other thing that we can also do here is we can go into player agent and we can 
decrement the speed. Let's go ahead and do a one instead of a 10. Make sure that our inputs are working. Go ahead and go back here and do a resume. I'm gonna hit play one more time. And you can see that things are working now. So what I'm gonna do is we need to do a couple of things on the on episode begin and also on the initialize. So on the initialize, we're gonna get the rigid body. We also need to get the original position, which we're getting now. And I'm also going to get the target or origin original position. The reason for that is because if we do any kind of movement on that, I don't want to be able to, I don't want the target to move. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that position and cache it. So I'm gonna do target position and then we can just do target transform and then we can just do the local position. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do on the on episode over on episode begin is we're gonna have to look at the target. So I'm just gonna do a transform and then look at and then that way we can start looking at the target at the beginning so we don't make it we don't make it too complicated for the agent. Perfect. We also need to get the position of the target. So this is gonna get it reset it every time we get to the on episode begin. So I'm just gonna do transform that local position. We can just do original target position. So we're gonna be resetting that here. Then the other thing that I also need to do is I want to make sure that we are resetting the position of the of the edging itself. So that's what we're saving here. So I'm just gonna do local position and then I'm gonna be resetting that value. Now the this is cool, but it's not that fun if we're gonna be putting that agent at the same time, at the same position every time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a vector tree and I'm gonna be randomizing the range. So I'm just gonna do random and then range. And we can say that the value of this guy is gonna go from a negative four to four. That way we can move this from, it's actually not gonna be, it's not gonna be X, it's gonna be on the Z axis. So I'm gonna do 0 0.5 because that was the original value of Y. And then I'm gonna be randomizing the value of the Z axis. So if we go back to Unity and we look at it, remember that this is the value that we're gonna be randomizing. You can also, another trick that I also do, so if we're starting here, let's say that we move to this way. So we're always going to be, you know, moving in those two directions. The maximum value is gonna be four and the minimum value is gonna be negative. And I'm looking at this number right here. So we should be safe with where we put, so we don't want the, the agent to go down. So that's what that's gonna do. So if we go back into Unity and you, you know, you just hit play, we can see that that's gonna, it should randomize it when the episode start. And let's just give it, yep. It looks like it's randomizing that. And for some reason, let me just make sure. Oh, I think we also need to cache the value of X because it's, it's actually going forward. So we can just hard code it. I don't think it matters in this case. You can also add a private variable in there if you wanted to do that. In my case, I think I think this is fine. We don't need to do anything fancy. And I think on the position of the, we're not changing the position of the target. I think we're just saving and restoring the original. So I think that's okay. The other thing that we can also do here is we can just, since we're saving it here, we can just do this. That way we're not hard coding anything. Same thing with this guy. We can just get the value of Y. There we go, I think that, that looks cleaner. Now, if we go ahead, and, go ahead and hit play, and you should see that that value, it's going to randomize. There we go, and we're starting right here. And I can also move it, so if we go into the actual game, and I don't think I can move it yet because this is not playing, but that's okay. We'll do that in just a minute. So, so, so far so good, this is really not doing anything just yet. So the other thing that I also need to do is I need to be able to to randomize, to actually check to, to make sure that the ball, if the ball is falling, then I can reset the agent. So one thing that we can do before we do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit resume here. And let's go ahead and go into the player and let's change this because we know that, that our axes are working. I'm just gonna change that back to default. And I'm gonna hit play and let's go ahead and look at this. And now this is, now it's actually working, right? It looks like it did work and then we need to resume it. We go ahead and do this. Let's put Unity here. I'm gonna put this here. I think it's gonna be easier to see. And then hit play. It looks like it's randomizing and then restarting, randomizing and restarting. And make sure that you specify the right run ID on the previous run before. Oh, okay. Looks like I'm not 
Let me go ahead and do, I'm just going to do a force. Perfect. And let's account for the, for a couple of checks in here. I think we need to do that before we keep going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the transform of this object, which is going to be the sphere. So I'm going to say, okay, if the, if the local position of the Y axis is less than zero, then we're basically going, going to be ending this episode. And I'm going to show you, we need to reward or actually discount or, or punish the agent for not performing well. So we're going to go back here and we can say punish the agent for their performance. So for now, let's just leave it like that. And I'm going to show you how this can be improved. So we're going to end the episode, which is basically going to call the on episode begin. And then we're going to be going through through that cycle. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity here. And then we're going to be hitting play, play to show you how this works. So right now, this is actually never rewarding the, the player. And that's something that we need to do. We need to make sure that we're rewarding the player whenever the player gets a point. So meaning that we're actually, you know, we're getting to the target and the target is within a specific distance. So right now we're just punishing the, the player. So that's really not fair. So we need to do something like that, right? We need to give it more of a reward. So I'm going to do distance from target. And then we're going to do vector three. And this is going to be using distance. And we're going to use the current distance, which is going to be transform and then local position. And then we're going to be calculating that based on the target, transform, and then local position. So another variable that I'm going to be adding in here, let me go ahead and make anything serializable, you know, be together so it's clean. And then I'm also going to be adding another variable here, distance. We can just say distance require. We can just set it to 1.5. I think that's what I did when I was testing it. And then we can just do serialize, right? So this is going to be the distance required from the, the agent and the target. So if the distance is less than 1.5 or equal to that, then we're going to be giving the agent a reward. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I'm going to say, okay, if the distance from the target is less than or equal to the distance required, then we got to give the agent, you know, a good, let's just say good job, right? So in this case, it's going to be set reward. And I'm going to give it just 1.0. And then we're going to be ending the episode. In this case, we are just ending the episode, but we're not taking any points from the, from the agent. I'm going to show you how it can improve if we do that. But for now, let's just leave it like that. So this is going to be, we, we're doing good. We're doing good. And then this is going to be, we're not doing so good, right? And that's if the if theming executes. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back into Unity here. And I think I can just make this bigger this time. And in this case, I'm going to go back into PowerShell and I'm going to, I'm going to keep using force just to overwrite it. And then right now we can just hit play and see what happens. And the velocity is just way too slow. We need to do, we need to do better. I think we need to do it faster. But you can see that the aging is, you know, just keeps going in that way. And that's actually working. It's just not doing, it just doesn't look good because we don't have enough training data. So go ahead and hit play and then stop that. There's a couple other things that I want to do before we, before we start looking at these as a, as a training data set where we're going to be training a lot of different areas. So the other thing that I'm going to do here that I found that was really helpful is we're going to be adding materials. We're going to be adding a method that Unity created in their examples, which I thought was really helpful. And in here, we're going to be adding a couple of materials. So I'm just going to go ahead and clone, clone, clone. This is going to be a success material. We're also going to be doing a failure material. And then we're going to be just using a default material. So the default material is going to be this one. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, we can just go ahead and select the material. and. We can actually just use that. I don't think I need it to create a default material. So we can just go ahead and remove that. And I'm going to have a success. The success is going to be green, the other one. So I think what I'm going to do instead of doing this, I'm going to use the materials that we already have. That way we can, that way it looks better. So we're going to be using, you know, perhaps 
this green when it's successful. So on the target, let's go ahead and change the color of the target. So that one I can do, let's do perhaps something, you know, something that comes out more. So default is going to be this. This one is going to be success. And then perhaps a red is going to be a failure. That way we can see. So what I'm going to do, let's actually do this. I think it's going to make it easier when you guys are, are looking at these materials. Even if this video is longer, I think it's helpful if I if we do things the right way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this one. I'm going to drop it in here. And then I'm going to clone the red one. I'm going to drop it in here. And I think I have, OK, now I need a green one. So I want a very strong green. So I'm going to clone it. I'm going to put it in here. So this one's going to be our default, right? So it's going to call it default. This one is going to be success. And this one is going to be our failure. Awesome. So we have three materials, but we don't. the player doesn't really know about them just yet. So let's go ahead and collapse this. I'm also going to be changing the speed to 10. We need a higher speed. And then let's go ahead and back open our player again. OK, so we're going to need a couple of different variables in here. So we're going to need a, a variable for the material. So it's going to be success. And we can, we're also going to need one for the failure material. Failure. And then I don't think we need one for success, for actually default, but let's just leave it, see what happens. Okay, so we have those three. And I also need to get the mesh render for the ground. So it's going to be another mesh collider, mesh render, and there's going to be the ground, mesh render. There we go. And then this one we can just get on the, you know, actually this one's going to be serializable because we can get it from the inspector. So I'm going to move this one right here. And these ones are going to be materials that we also set. So we also need to do serializable on these ones. We also need to do serializable on this one and also serializable on this one as well. Perfect. And again, let's move the private these ones down. And then anything that is exposed, I like to keep right above it. OK, so I think we have everything here. So I'm going to create a new method. And then this one is going to be a private enumerable. And this one is going to be swap. We can just call it swap. Swap ground material. I think that's what Unity call it. And then the material that we're going to be swapping. And then we're going to be setting basically the time of how long that is going to be taking. Awesome. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to need to actually set that material. So to do that, we're going to be using ground render. So let me go ahead and go back here and see. OK, ground mesh render, that's what I name it. And we're going to be saying, OK, the ground render material now is going to be set to this material. We need to tell it to basically stop for a little bit of time. So I'm just going to do return and then new wait for seconds, and we're going to be passing the time. Again, this is something that Unity built before, so it's not something that I built. So I'm just going to give him you know, proper credits. And this is going to be ground. Actually, we can just, oh, that's why I couldn't find it, because it wasn't, it was, there was a typo. And let me just fix the typo. There we go. And then this one is going to reset itself to the default material. That's why I needed that. Awesome. So how do I actually call that? And that's what I'm going to do right here. So if I end the episode here, that means that something bad happened, right? This is this wasn't a positive thing. So I'm just going to do a start, a start core routine. And we need to call that core routine. So I'm just going to say swap ground material. This one is going to be a failure. So I'm going to be passing in the failure. And then we also need to tell it the time. So I think half, half a second is enough. So I'm just going to do 0.5. And the next thing that we also need to do is, and this one needs to be an enumerable, I enumerator, sorry. There we go. I keep I keep getting them confused. But anyway, so that will basically set it to red. And then if we go on the positive side of things, it's going to be green, right? Because we'll reach the distance required. So it's going to be the success material. We're also going to set it to that, to that time. And I think that's everything that I need here. So we can also add a couple of regions here. I can just say this is going to be private instance variables. 
I like doing this from time to time just to, to keep things organized. And then anything here is going to be exposed. And it's going to be in region. And then this is going to be expose instance variables. OK, so I think that it's clean. We can just clean up our using statements. And just give it some space here, a space here. OK, so I think this is looking cleaner. And we have everything we need. We're resetting. OK, awesome. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And we need to set a couple, couple of properties in here, right? So these are the ones that we need to set. So I need to set the platform. And the one that I want to change, and it's really up to you if you want to just change this one, you can change this one. If you want to change this one, you can change this one. If you want to do them all, I think, I think that's cool too. I'm just going to use this one to be the one that it's the indicator. And to do that, let's go ahead and go back into our player. And we need to use the ground mesh render. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the, sorry, not that one, but the main one. We can just call this one. Let's call this one main floor. And this one we can call, that's why names are so important because it's really easy to, to lose track. And OK, so on the main floor, I'm going to go ahead and assign the ground mesh render. So it says material, we're going to go into materials. Remember, we have our success here. We have our failure here. We also have our default. So that looks good. I think that looks good. I don't need to set the max step. That's going to be set automatically. It's going to be continuous. And I think I have everything set correctly. OK, so the other thing that I also want to do, and I want you to get used to this, is actually creating a prefab for the area. And I'm going to show you why that is important. So I'm going to go ahead and create a prefab. And this is going to be prefabs where we're going to be putting them. I'm going to drag them and drop them in here. And these ones, what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and delete it. And actually, I'm going to rename it. This is going to be our player maze area. The reason why I rename it is because we're going to be creating a lot of different examples in this repo. So I want to make sure that we keep them with a unique name. OK, so I think that looks good and perfect. There's no override, so I don't need to apply any changes. OK, so, so, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and go back into my training here. And I'm going to just go ahead and force an override on a new session. OK, so we're good to go. And I think that's everything that we need. I'm going to go ahead and click here, and then just make sure that we hit play. And let's see what happens, right? OK, so you guys can see that we're getting red, 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 red. And things are just starting to, to look like a normal training. So the agent is trying hard to, to, you know, to actually find where the target is, but it just keeps bumping on, into the same section. And, and that's, I mean, it's, it's going to work at some point, but it's going to take a lot of time. So what I ended up doing, and this is what Unity also recommends, is there's a couple of things that I, I want to improve. So I'm going to go ahead and Let's see what how far I want to go. It's it's good recommendation to clone your areas. And the reason for that is because the brains have the same ID. So if we move these to negative, let's do like a negative. That's too close. Let's go ahead and do 12. Okay, I think 12 works. Let's do that one more time. So it's gonna be negative 24. Let's do one more time. And it's gonna be negative 36. Awesome. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone them in the opposite direction. Let's see, negative, we can do negative 32. I think that works. And then let's just do one more set, negative 64. There we go. And I'm going to, I don't like to have those names be all like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename them all. And they're going to be in the order of you know how I create them. Awesome. So it's always good to do something like this where you know, you have your you have duplicates. The, the reason why duplicates are important is because it's going to minimize the training the training time. So okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align the camera so we can see more of the of maybe something like something like that. There we go. Okay, so I think that looks that looks good enough. So that's what I wanted to see. And I'm also gonna just focus on this area for now. OK, so, so so far, so good. And if we hit, let's go ahead and look at, let's go ahead and look in here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit force one more time. 
I'm going to restart everything and I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And what I'm going to do is, yeah, I think that's, I'm going to leave this running for maybe for like five minutes and see if we get any improvements. If we don't get any improvements, I'm going to show you a couple more tricks on how we can make this better. So let's just go ahead and leave it running. All right, guys, so it looks like I got this working a lot better now. It's been about 123 seconds. Currently, we're getting the mean reward of 0.7, which is pretty good. And you can see that we're getting a lot more green than we're getting red. The other thing that I also had to tweak was the actual mass on the rigid body. This was, the number was way too high. It was set to a 10, and I mistakenly did that because I didn't really think it was gonna impact everything. So I changed that to a one because my Mac was actually working and on my PC it wasn't working. So now it looks like everything, it's, it's a lot better. So I'm gonna leave it running maybe for about, you know, until we get to 500,000 on the actual step and then see if we can get to point, at least 0.97 or 0.98, something higher so that we can see how it looks. All right guys, so I'm gonna call this good. Looks like we're getting a mean reward of 0 0.926, 0 0.94, and looks like we just finished generating the model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how that model runs. So if we go here and open up the maze, so this one should have been the one that got last generated. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the one that we had. Let's go ahead and hit delete. And then we're gonna drag and drop the one that we just finished generating. And everything should work a lot better now that we have a better brain. So I'm going to go ahead and open the prefab, make sure you go to the prefab. And then I'm gonna drag and drop this new file. Looks like it already, it already updated itself, so we can go ahead and go back. If everything works, we should be able to traverse the, the maze in most times and basically get to our goal. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and see if this is working. And let's give it a second here, and there we go. So we can see that right off the bat we have just tons of green. And yeah, this is working, this is working really well. We get a lot of different greens and greens. And we have officially teach machine learning how to get to the goal with, you know, a little bit of a percentage failure, but I think I'm happy with the results. So I'm gonna call it good, guys. If you guys have any questions about anything, please let me know.